Our goal is for you to learn the skills you need to get a job as an entry-level UX designer. But how do you demonstrate those skills during the job application process? That's where portfolios come in. In this video, you'll learn what a portfolio is and why UX designers use them. A portfolio is a collection of work that you've created that shows your skills in a certain area, like painting, photography, or UX design. UX design is a creative field, so it's important to show hiring managers examples of your work and demonstrate the skills you can bring to the job. In the past, portfolios were usually a physical collection of work, like a giant briefcase full of drawings. But in today's world, it's more likely that your portfolio will be on a website, which is much easier to update and share. Next, you'll build your own website to showcase your future portfolio. You don't need to know how to write code or have any work to include yet. As you build your own projects throughout this program, you'll add them to this new portfolio. Sound fun? It is. Creating a showcase of your work and skills is a great way to start feeling like a part of the UX design community. Keep in mind that the design of the website itself is also important. Having a well-designed website is another way to demonstrate that you understand the principles of UX design. You wouldn't want your website to have a bad user experience when you're applying for a job in UX. As you design the website, you want your portfolio to tell a story and grab the user's attention. This will help you stand out. After all, the user might be a recruiter or a client interested in offering you a job. Next up, you'll meet entry-level UX designers, explore real-world portfolios, and learn how those portfolios help lead to jobs in UX design. Ready? Let's get started. Building a website might seem intimidating, but there are a lot of tools to help you. Most website builders are simple to use and don't require any coding or technical knowledge. Plus, they have a support team on staff to help. Website builders often have tutorials to help you figure out what layout to use and how to add text, sound, and images. These user-friendly website builders feature WYSIWYG editors. WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. In other words, you can type and make your text bold or italics as you would in a word processing program like Google Docs and Microsoft Word. All this might seem obvious, but web-based WYSIWYG editors have only been around for 10 years or so. Before website builders were widely available, you had to create everything in HTML and CSS, which are the coding languages used to build the internet. Fortunately, things are a lot simpler now, so you don't need to know any code to build an impressive portfolio. If you do know how to code, or if you'd like the challenge and flexibility that you get with coding, awesome. You can choose to build a website from scratch instead of using a website builder. Just be sure to put your UX design work front and center and prioritize the UX of the site. Remember, Recruiters and employers want to know about your UX design work, not how good you are at coding. Now let's check out some common website builders used by UX designers to build portfolios. There are lots of options for website builders, but in this video, we'll focus on three of the most popular, Wix, Squarespace, and Webflow. For this program, you can choose any of the three. They all have benefits and drawbacks. So choose the website builder that works best for you. Don't worry that your portfolio might look similar to your classmates. There are a variety of templates to choose from on each website builder. You'll personalize your template to convey your unique style, communicate the value you bring to the UX design industry, and showcase your designs. Now, we'll quickly review each website builder then you can use the links in the readings to learn more and decide which website builder you'd like to use. The reading also has step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up your website. Wix is easy to use and a favorite with folks in all kinds of creative industries. There are plenty of templates and even some templates specifically for portfolios. Templates mean that you don't have to start from a blank slate, which makes it easy 
to achieve impressive results in no time. Squarespace is also popular, especially with visual designers. Squarespace is best known for its blog function, but it also has beautiful website themes. There are a bunch of templates to choose from, and it's flexible to allow for personalization. If you're new to website building, it's definitely a great choice. Finally, Webflow is a well-known option among UX designers for its on-trend styles and layouts and high level of customization. You do need some knowledge of coding though. So if you'd like to practice your coding skills, Webflow might be a good choice for you. Each of these website builders offer their own add-ons that you can purchase. One option is a domain or the address of your website. It's better to have your own domain name for personal branding. You'll personalize your template to convey your own unique style, communicate the value you bring to the UX design industry, and showcase your designs. OK, now you know why website builders are helpful tools for building your UX design portfolio. Take some time to check out each tool so you fully understand the options available. Then pick the one you want to use based on your needs and your career interests. Congrats on setting up your website. Now that you've got that first step out of the way, you can start personalizing the website. In this video, we'll share best practices and highlight some essential features of UX design portfolios. Keep in mind, there is no right way to build your portfolio. Every designer, recruiter, and client has a different idea about what should be featured in a portfolio. It's most important to find a way to make yourself stand out from the other designers. You'll also want to express yourself in a way that fits your job interests. For example, if you're interested in specializing in interaction, visual or motion design, your portfolio should showcase that type of work. Ready? Let's get started. Pro tip number one, establish your personal brand. Your personal brand is the way in which your personality, unique skills, and values as a designer intersect with your public persona. We'll learn more about branding later, but the main thing to know is that your personal brand is the first impression you make. Your personal brand should clearly demonstrate who you are and what makes you interesting. Pro tip number two, tell a story. Your website could easily turn into a list of links and photos. But to engage your audience, you need to tell a story about your design process with a beginning, middle, and end. This might mean that you start with an introduction of the design problem. Then in the middle, show the process you followed to complete the designs, like user research, sketches, and wireframes. Then end with an image of the polished design and an endorsement from your client or another person whose opinion you value. Pro tip number three, be concise. Use minimal text to describe your work and highlight the key insights that help inform your decisions. Let your work speak for itself. If you need to explain your work in more detail, add links to other pages or PDFs. Pro tip number four, keep your navigation simple and intuitive. The navigation is the way users get from page to page on a website. Users should be able to reach the home page from any part of your site. And your navigation should lead them from one project to the next. It should also be easy for users to navigate to the contact page if they want to get in touch with you. Your contact page should include your email address, a copy of your resume, and links to your professional social media accounts. Pro tip number five, go beyond the template. Although a website builder's pre-designed layouts make it easy to get started, you need to go a step further. Customize your website to align with your brand and the story you want to tell. You should demonstrate your design skills and provide a good user experience. For example, remove the text that comes preloaded in the template and replace it with your own content. Also, register your own domain name so that your website's address doesn't contain the name of the website builder. You can buy a domain directly through website builders or through a third-party service. Pro tip number six, include a diversity of projects. You should have three to six projects in your portfolio that demonstrate the range of your skills. At the end of this program, 
you'll have created at least three projects, so you'll be well on your way. Make sure each project shows a different facet of your design talents. Pro tip number seven, feature case studies. A case study leads the user through your design process from the beginning to the end. Your portfolio should feature case studies, not just mock-ups of design ideas. A case study answers these questions. What was the problem you were trying to solve? What process did you follow? Where did you succeed or fail? What insights inform your design decisions along the way? And what was the ultimate solution? And why do you feel that solution was the best? When describing case studies, you might want to include things like the project's name and duration, your role on the design team, including your personal contributions to the project, the project's goal, the research that was conducted, the intended audience, any sketches or wireframes, user testing results, the final design, and a conclusion about what you learned in the process. You'll learn more about each of these elements as you continue through the program. One more thing to keep in mind about case studies, be careful not to share any proprietary information or break a non-disclosure agreement if you have one. A non-disclosure agreement is a contract an employee might sign when working with a business in which they agree not to share sensitive information, like designs in the process of being developed. Pro tip number eight, make sure your website is responsive. Remember that responsive means the on-screen appearance of the website adjusts based on the user's device. So whether someone looks at your website on the desktop computer or mobile phone, they'll have a good experience. And finally, pro tip number nine, test your website. It's important to test your website on different devices to make sure it functions properly. For example, you might need to move buttons around or adjust images to fit on the mobile version of your site. You don't want to lose a recruiter's interest because they decided to pull up your website on their phone instead of their computer and found the text misaligned. Like we mentioned earlier, having a portfolio with a great user experience will impress potential employers. All right, that's it. It's a lot of work to build a design portfolio that tells your story and connects with users. That's why we're starting now. If you add new pieces to your portfolio as you build them, you'll be in much better shape when it's time to apply for jobs. To stay on track, schedule time to work on your portfolio every week. We'll remind you to add to your website as you complete projects and learn new skills. Coming up, we'll explore personal branding and why it matters so you can get to work personalizing your portfolio. Let's get to it. Your personal brand is an essential way to demonstrate your value as a designer and should be a central focus when building your portfolio. But why do personal brands matter? Let's investigate. When you think of the word brand, well-known businesses come to mind. How do you think about a company when you hear their name? What's your perception of McDonald's as a brand? Or Starbucks? What about Apple? All of these are major brands with very different messages about their business, products, and the value they offer consumers. They might even make you feel a certain way when you think about them, like hungry or excited. But branding isn't just for big companies. People think about their brands too. For example, celebrities choose their work and philanthropies they support based on the personal brand they want to convey. You can do the same thing as a UX designer. You want to build a personal brand that showcases the type of work you want to do. Your personal brand is your primary source of marketing, which is why it's so important to be your authentic self. So how do you figure out what your personal brand should be? You can start by asking yourself a few questions. What am I naturally good at? What have I learned to do well? What do I enjoy? What do I value? How do other people describe me and my talents? And what do I want people to recognize me for? If you're already answering those questions in your mind, fantastic. Later, you'll complete a worksheet that will help you answer these questions. Now let's explore why branding is important. When you're working as a UX designer or in any other creative role, 
your personal brand is a way for you to stand out from the crowd. Otherwise, it's easy to get lost in a sea of job applicants. You want recruiters to understand who you are, your passions, and your strengths right away. Having a strong personal brand can also help match you with companies that share your values. When a company looks for a designer, it's helpful for them to understand your personal brand before they hire you. Think about how you might shop at a certain store based on their branding. For example, what brand comes to mind when you hear the words inexpensive or expensive? What about healthy or comfort food? And how about celebrities? Who would you describe as a social activist or generous or humble? Ideally, you want the way you think about yourself and the way others describe you to be similar. When you think about your personal brand, it's useful to come up with a list of your talents and values. When doing a personal branding exercise, you might realize that your self-perception and public perceptions are different. That's perfectly normal, but it's not ideal when you're trying to project a particular brand. So you might want to think about how you can bring your self-perception and public perception closer together. In addition, your brand should be consistent everywhere you have a presence online. That includes your social media accounts, your profiles on UX design communities, your resume, and your business cards. Communicating through design and through writing are similar skills. The main goal for writing your portfolio is to structure the information clearly and concisely. Focus on highlighting the most important parts of your story and keep your writing succinct and easy to skim. Most recruiters and hiring managers review a lot of portfolios. You want them to stay engaged. Let's start with your introduction. The introduction to you and your portfolio should go above the fold on the homepage of your website. The term above the fold comes from the design of a newspaper if you're holding a newspaper in your hands, the most important information is on the top part of the front page before you unfold it or flip it over. The same concept applies to websites. What's above the fold is the content on a website that doesn't require scrolling down. Your introduction should be clear and to the point. Your name and what you do. You might also include something that establishes your personal brand. For example, hi, I'm Michael. I believe that creative collaboration between design and technology is the magic that takes experiences from good to great. If a recruiter is searching for a motion designer and can immediately tell that's your specialty by glancing at the introduction on your home page, then great. They're more likely to continue going through your portfolio. But if your home page uses vague language or doesn't communicate anything at all, the recruiter might not bother going further. Next up, the About Me page. This is exactly what it sounds like, a professional page about you. Try reading About Me pages on the websites of a few UX designers or companies you admire. You can write in more detail on your About Me page since you want potential employers and recruiters to be able to learn more about you. You might include what kind of work you do what you're passionate about, or things you value, where you work currently if your job is in a related field, your credentials like this certificate and any additional education, any notable projects, clients, or awards, and your contact information, including your email address, links to your profiles on professional networking sites, and where you currently live. And finally, you want to include descriptions of your work in your portfolio. Within the case study for each project, you should write about the topics we discussed earlier, such as your role in the project, your process, and the final design. Throughout your portfolio, let your designs tell the story and provide evidence of your talent. To keep your writing concise and articulate, here are a few tips. Use as few words as possible to make your point. Avoid complicated language. You don't need three adjectives when one specific one will do. The words you choose should be clear descriptors, not buzzwords. 
Avoid jargon. Jargon are industry terms that people who don't work in UX design may not know. Your writing should be easy to understand and approachable. Include key words that might be in a job description or concepts that every UX designer should know, like the user journey or design sprint. This is a good way to increase your site's discoverability on search engines. Inject personality. Be conversational. Your website should accurately reflect you, your work, and your brand you've established. Last tip, find a trusted editor. Everyone, even professional writers, make mistakes. Ask a friend to check your writing for spelling and grammatical errors, or to point out any places where the writing is distracting from the projects you're trying to highlight. That's it. Now you know some tips for writing in your portfolio. Writing well takes practice and it might take a few tries to get it right. You'll have the opportunity to practice your writing in an upcoming activity. If you're having trouble, check out the discussion forum and ask a classmate for advice. Coming up, we'll talk about building a cohesive and consistent presence online. Let's keep going. Great work on your portfolio so far. You've accomplished so much already like setting up your website and learning best practices for writing. In this video, we'll explain how to build a cohesive and consistent presence online. We covered how to apply your personal brand to your portfolio in an earlier video. Your personal brand should come across in your portfolio, on social media, in online UX design communities, and on job search websites. You'll also want to keep handy the worksheets you completed about your personal brand so you can reference them in the next few videos. So what does it mean to build your professional presence online? Start with your personal statement, which was part of the branding worksheet you completed. A personal statement is a one or two sentence phrase that describes what you do and what you stand for. Think of a personal statement like your own slogan or tagline. You want your personal statement to highlight what makes your work unique. The best personal statements are memorable and catchy. Consider including a version of your personal statement on the About Me page of your portfolio website. It's helpful to repeat words that you use to describe yourself in order to reinforce the key elements of your brand. You might also want to include your personal statement on your social media profiles or your resume. Keep in mind, whatever your personal statement communicates should also be reflected in your work. For example, if you describe yourself as organized, that should be evident in your designs. Or if you're passionate about working in virtual reality, you should include a design for a virtual reality experience. Even if it's not your own design, you can describe why it's inspiring to you. In addition, you probably know that you should be thoughtful about posting pictures of yourself on the internet. Since we're trying to build a cohesive professional presence online, your photos should be consistent across platforms, like your portfolio and LinkedIn profile. For example, using the same photo of yourself everywhere can help recruiters identify you across platforms. And when selecting a photo of yourself to use, you should express your unique style, culture, and interests. Finally, make sure your color scheme, logo, font, and other design elements are consistent across platforms. This includes websites like your portfolio and social media accounts, as well as physical products like your business cards. Of course, there's only so much customization you can do on some of these social media sites, but try to keep the look and feel as consistent as possible whenever you can. Keep in mind that your online presence and personal brand are important in landing a job and growing your career. It's also a chance for you to be creative, so have fun with it. Next, we'll explore how personal branding is useful when creating profiles on social media sites and online communities for UX designers. There's a good chance you already have a profile on at least one social media site, like Facebook or Instagram, that you use to connect with friends and family. Social media can be a great way to connect with potential employers, learn about new concepts and ideas, and network with other UX designers. Right now, 
let's focus on two of the most popular social media sites for UX designers, LinkedIn and Twitter. LinkedIn is a professional networking site where you can connect with people you know, learn more about companies, read about interesting ideas, and post your own content. LinkedIn is a great place to host your resume and get noticed by recruiters. It's one of the top websites recruiters use to find job candidates. In fact, many of my job opportunities over the years started with networking and making connections through LinkedIn. So how do you set up a profile on LinkedIn? First, you go to the LinkedIn homepage and create an account. Then create your profile. Be sure to list your job history or other professional experiences, along with descriptions of your role at each organization. Once your profile is filled out, you're ready to connect with people. It's best to connect with people you actually know, especially people you've worked with. You might also want to connect with former teachers, coaches, classmates, or family members. You can add a connection by clicking the Connect button. Personalize your connection request with a short message that reminds the person how you know each other. Once they accept, you'll get a confirmation saying you're connected. You should also use LinkedIn to connect with recruiters in the UX design industry. Add a note to your connection request that you're looking to learn more about the company and their job openings. You can also consider connecting with employees at the company you'd like to work for. Browse the LinkedIn profiles of people associated with the company. Check out if you know anyone who currently works at the company or has worked there in the past. If so, don't be afraid to send them a personalized message. LinkedIn will also tell you if you have friends of friends who work at the company. If this happens, reach out to your friend to see if they're willing to make an introduction to their friend who works at the company. If you don't have connections to anyone at the company, send a personalized message to someone at the company whose work impresses you. You can ask if they'd be willing to have a 15-minute conversation about their day-to-day -day job and how they like working at the company. Finally, Join a LinkedIn group. These are groups of people in a particular industry or who share a specific interest. There are dozens of groups already dedicated to UX design. So join one or two that interest you. Get involved in the group conversation. Then feel free to connect with folks in the group. You can also follow a specific company or hashtag on LinkedIn, like hashtag UX design. To learn new trends, read articles, and chat with people who share your interests. Another great place to network with professionals is on Twitter. If you aren't familiar with Twitter, it's a social media platform where you can follow people, interact with their posts, and share your own ideas. Twitter isn't as focused on professional networking as LinkedIn. It's usually better for reading posts from prominent people in the UX design industry, starting conversations with peers, and learning from industry thought leaders on a more personal level. It's okay if you're not ready to start tweeting about your UX design knowledge while you're still learning about the field. You might start by following industry insiders and liking and retweeting their posts. If you're feeling bold, you can add to the conversation by replying to their tweets. You can also tag industry professionals in your own tweets. This is just like striking up a conversation in real life. Who knows, they might want to connect. Keep in mind that LinkedIn and Twitter have different tones, and it's a good idea to treat them that way. You might be more professional and focused on LinkedIn, but more open and conversational on Twitter. That's great. It gives recruiters and other designers the opportunity to see different sides of your personality. Remember, anything you post on social media is public facing. Even private messages to other users can be copied and shared widely. So be smart about what you post and like. You should also be smart about sharing photos or posts that don't align with the personal brand you're developing as a UX designer. When in doubt, set your personal accounts to private mode. There's a reading included this week that outlines how to do just that. All right, you've got LinkedIn and Twitter covered. Now, let's keep going with popular online UX design communities. We just discussed how LinkedIn and Twitter are great places to network with recruiters and professionals. There are also online communities specifically for UX designers. Having a presence on one of these sites is a fantastic way to gain exposure and demonstrate your skills in UX design. 
In this video, we'll talk about some of the most popular UX design communities, Dribbble, Behance, and Medium. You can create accounts on these sites to learn more about UX design in general and to get design inspiration from other professionals. In addition, posting your own designs on these sites is a great way to get feedback on your work from experienced UX designers. To get started, let's dig into Dribbble. Dribbble, that's three Bs, is a community of designers who want to share their work, ask for feedback, get inspiration, and find jobs. The designs that people share on Dribbble are usually not full case studies, like what's in your portfolio. Instead, they are small snapshots of work that highlight a particular skill or interest, like branding, product design, or typography. If there's a specific design you like, you can follow that designer. It's also helpful to check out designers with the most followers in order to understand popular kinds of designs and get ideas about how to present yourself effectively. Similarly, you can follow teams on Dribbble. These might include companies like Google or independent design groups that have their own pages. Plus, liking and commenting on projects is a great way to start conversations with other designers and make connections in the UX design community. Finally, Dribbble is a great community to join if you're looking for a job. Dribbble has a robust job search forum, including a job board and a freelance marketplace. Employers pay to list their jobs and internships in this forum, so the posted positions are legitimate opportunities. In addition, recruiters look for designers on Dribbble, so being an active member is another way to demonstrate your skills and get hired. A second popular community for UX designers is Behance. Many features on Behance are similar to Dribbble. For example, you can discover designs from around the world and follow specific designers. Behance also has a job board that features full-time jobs, freelance roles, and internships. You can narrow your search on the job board down to very specific fields. In addition, designers frequently live stream from Behance to demonstrate their skills in real time. Finally, a third online community for UX designers is Medium. You might be familiar with Medium already. It's a popular blogging platform featuring articles on all kinds of topics. There's a vibrant UX design community on Medium, specifically at UX Collective, a subset of the website. Medium is pretty different from Dribbble and Behance. For example, on Medium, your designs are not the main attraction. Instead, the Medium community focuses on long-form writing about UX design, sometimes including visuals. So start reading. There are lots of articles on Medium from leaders in UX design, including Googlers. Medium is a great place to discover the processes of top designers and learn about industry trends. We even have a Google design collection. Keep in mind that articles on blogging sites like Medium should be considered opinion pieces, not objective research. That said, you can still learn a lot from the resources on Medium, like tips for using a specific design software or how to build equity and accessibility into your work. You can communicate with other designers by responding to articles in the comments section and giving claps, which are basically Medium's like button. You can also follow designers who inspire you and sign up for their newsletters. It's a great way to expand your network. You can even publish your own Medium post. Medium offers plenty of resources to help you get started, polish your story, and find your audience. You can find more details on how to create a profile on each of these platforms in the course readings. Get creative, and don't be afraid to start posting your design ideas, requesting feedback, and becoming an active member of online UX design communities. You'll do great. Great work starting your portfolio and developing your online presence so far. This is such an important part of showing your value as a designer. Now, let's discuss the goal of all that work, getting a job. It's common for hiring managers and recruiters to check out your online portfolio and profiles to learn more about you. But how do they use that information? You'll find out in this video. 
When you apply for a job through an online job board, you usually submit a copy of your resume and a link to your portfolio. Your resume lists your work experience and educational background. If you don't have an updated resume right now, no problem. You'll build one later in the program. Once a recruiter receives your application, the recruiter reviews your portfolio to learn what kind of work you do and how you present it. The recruiter might even review your portfolio first and then decide whether to explore the work history and qualifications on your resume. And recruiters aren't the only ones who review your portfolio. Recruiters often share your portfolio with interviewers. Interviewers are usually UX designers or individuals who work closely with UX designers. Interviewers want to know more about the work you can do and the value you can bring to the team. During the interview, interviewers will ask you questions about your portfolio like, why did you choose this specific technique? Or, what do you think about the product solution? I remember my first interview as a new designer. It was at a startup. A bunch of people with different roles interviewed me. I met engineers and designers. Engineers asked questions about the technical feasibility of my designs and how prepared my assets were for engineering handoff. Designers asked me questions about specific aspects of my portfolio, how I solve problems, and my research process. Recruiters will also check out your online presence, especially your social media like LinkedIn. Recruiters will use LinkedIn to confirm your education and your work history. Recruiters will also want to check out your other social media profiles to learn about your interests outside of work and determine if you are a good match for the company. Remember what we talked about earlier? You want to emphasize your unique value and showcase your personal brand. An interviewer might also use information from your social media accounts to ask you more specific questions during a screening call or in an interview. All right, so now you know how recruiters and interviewers use social media to review your online presence. We're nearing the end, so let's recap. You've learned why portfolios are important and which elements are essential, why personal branding is important in UX design, and how to apply that knowledge to your portfolio, how to create profiles on social media and UX communities, and you also started building your own portfolio website. You're doing great, keep it up. Now that you're comfortable presenting yourself and communicating online, check out the upcoming videos about networking and how to overcome imposter syndrome. Before we dig in, let's explore why networking is important. Networking means interacting with other people to develop professional contacts and learn more about a job industry. You can network online or in person. Networking can be strictly professional. For example, you might attend a lecture at a design conference and meet other UX designers in the audience. You can extend your conversation beyond the conference by connecting with your new acquaintance on LinkedIn or other online platform. Or you might find someone on LinkedIn who works at a company you're interested in. You can send them a personalized message and ask them to share details about their experience as a UX designer. Or you can connect with folks who are also enrolled in this program in the discussion forum. Beyond a professional focus, networking is social too. Your network includes all of the people you already know, from former teachers and counselors to your distant relatives. You can join a professional organization to expand your network too. You can find design-related associations in your area by searching online, asking your local librarian, or visiting a workforce development office for advice. Many of these professional organizations hold happy hours or picnics so members can connect in a more relaxed setting. It's smart to think about the benefits of social connections over the long term. A new person you meet at a happy hour might not be able to advance your career right now, but if you keep in touch in the future, your new friend might know someone who is looking to hire a UX designer at their company. You never know where your connection might lead. 
Making connections with people in the UX design industry is also an excellent way to find a mentor. A mentor is someone in your field who gives you advice about your career. A mentor can be someone with many years of experience in UX design, who can provide tips on growing your career, organizations to join, and books to read. Or a mentor can be a newbie UX designer who gives pointers about creating an online portfolio or acing the job interview. Keep in mind, most people like to help other people succeed. And experienced UX designers remember what it's like to start their career. Don't be afraid to seek out a mentor. You might be surprised how happy people are to help you. There are a lot of ways to find a mentor. Is there someone you used to work with who you admire? Is there an event coming up in your community where you can meet someone new? Or should you send a message to the designer on Behance that you love to follow? When you find a mentor and are ready to ask for their advice, be prepared. It's helpful to have clear goals for the conversation. Some topics you might want to ask a mentor about include finding your first UX design job, developing specific skills, or learning a new tool, moving from the type of company you currently work at into UX design, specializing in a type of design like interaction, visual, or motion versus being a generalist designer, or getting feedback on your portfolio. Before the first meeting with your new mentor, write a list of questions that you want to ask her. This will help you feel prepared and keep the conversation flowing. After the first meeting, you should consider how often you want to meet moving forward. It helps to set the expectation about your relationship up front. For example, you might want to meet at a local coffee shop once a month or check in over the phone every other month. Networking and finding a mentor can be a lot of fun. The more you take part in conversations in this program's discussion forum, on social media, and in UX design communities, the more comfortable you'll become with talking to new people. It gets easier and more natural with practice. An early mentor of mine provided some great advice that I still use today. She suggested sharing my work with the design community regularly to receive feedback. She also taught me that it's important to not just focus on what I can get from networking, but more importantly, what I can give back to the community. I think we can all really benefit from a mentor's advice. Start building connections now, and it will prove valuable to you in the long term. One obstacle we all face when growing our career is imposter syndrome, which is what we're going to talk about in this video. Imposter syndrome is the belief that you're unskilled, inferior to others, or bad at your job, despite your successes. In other words, imposter syndrome occurs when you think you're a bad designer, even when everyone else tells you you're a great designer. Everyone feels like an imposter sometimes. From the brand new person on your team to Google's most senior leaders, imposter syndrome looks different for each person. But there are some telltale red flags. Symptoms of imposter syndrome might include lack of self-confidence, feeling like a fraud, constant comparison to other people, self-doubt, not trusting your intuition and capabilities, negative self-talk, or irrational fears of the future. Do any of those sound familiar to you? In professional settings, imposter syndrome can come to life in many ways. A few examples include not applying to jobs unless you meet every requirement, taking on extra work to make sure you're doing it all, and shrugging off compliments. There are countless reasons why we might feel imposter syndrome. The good news is that there are some small steps we can take when imposter syndrome kicks in. First, acknowledge the thoughts. Recognize how you're feeling and think about why you're feeling this way. Understand your own patterns and identifying situations that make you feel imposter syndrome is a helpful place to start. Second, own your accomplishments. Your success is not due to luck or help from others. Your success is due to your intelligence and hard work. Take responsibility for the role you played in the accomplishment. Third, 
make a list. Write down five things that show you're qualified for the job you are considering. Or write down five accomplishments you're proud of. Focus on all the unique skills you can bring to the table. Fourth, have a conversation. To address your inner critic, it's helpful to talk about what's going on in your mind. Many people hesitate to share how they feel because they're scared about how others might respond. But remember your new mentor? I bet they still feel like an outsider sometimes too, especially when they change jobs or take new responsibilities at work. Ask your mentor how they handle imposter syndrome. Lastly, realize you are not alone. If you feel like an imposter, no matter what the reason, you are not the only one. UX designers with decades of experience still feel like frauds at times. I still get imposter syndrome every now and then too. Figuring out my strengths as a designer over the years has helped me become more confident in myself. I also find that celebrating my achievements has helped make creeping feelings of imposter syndrome go away. Starting a new job or changing careers takes time. Give yourself a break and understand that you'll make mistakes along the way. By taking this program, you are already proving that you have curiosity, persistence, and grit. And this demonstrates you have the drive to be successful. If you start questioning your ability, remind yourself that everyone started off at the beginning. Congratulations on finishing this course from the Google UX Design Certificate. You can access the full experience including job search help and start to earn your certificate by clicking on the icon or the link in the description below. Watch the next video in the course by clicking here and subscribe to our channel for more from upcoming Google Career Certificates.